so it's Saturday, and you know what that means. It finally stopped raining, which has been raining all morning, and uh, the ground's wet as hell, but I'm fixing to get in here and wire this micro amp up. I have tested this thing at 16 volts, and it did um, power on and not protect. But that don't mean shit because I've tested an amp that did 16 volt before and it powered on, did fine until you plug RCAs in and put speaker loads on it and then it wants to protect from voltage. So I'm hoping this one don't do that. Let's go ahead and set everything to high pass filter. This thing has the low pass filter. <laughs> low pass, full. <laughs> yeah, I don't even understand it. But anyway, guys. Um... Yeah, we're getting ready to put this bitch in and see what it does. So we'll be back. I've been busy. RCAs, speaker wire and remote wire, power wires. Notched it where the amp sit flat on each side. But as you see, uh, get out of there. Right here, I'm going to have to cut this out on each side. No biggie, though. I mean... I should be able to rip through that pretty quick with my uh, grinder and a cutoff disc. But I am wanting to keep this uh, tray. I just think it'll look cool because when you're looking, you're just going to see a piece of amp. But um, that is a good place to put the amps. So anyway, what had happened was that little lamp there, it didn't work. I mean, it worked for a minute and then it started smoking. So it don't like 16 volt. But hey, we live and learn, so I'm going to put a four channel in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the speakers, normal off four channels, center channel bridged off of that same channels. And then the doors run them normal. Just barely crack the gain on the tweeters and center channel. Crank the gain up where it's not clipping and it'll play the uh, that other shit nice and loud. So... We're going to have to pull the head unit back out because we're going to lose center channel control from the head unit, but it don't matter. It's going to run the four channel on basically a five channel mode, whatever. It's going to be okay. Um, it'll work. Good plan. But right now, I'm just trying to get this in. The enclosure wasn't 100% dry. And then I got this shit on it so the top won't dry. <laughs> so it is what it is, guys. Got my little luggage rack back here. I did put some, uh, that ain't even pull noodle. That's like insulation for pipes. But I put that there to lay my canopies on so they won't get jacked up. Now this here, let me see, which is, uh, this is a good short piece. If I can get Deb to hold the camera. Oh shit, Deb's already gone, so I'll get this, guys. Let's see here. Can you hold the camera? I'm just trying to, trying to see something here. So if I bring this bitch there, oh God, I got plenty of room. Plenty of room, guys. Even with this being one of my shorter ones, if I was hooked there, that'd snake up through. I got plenty of water. So that's a good sign, yeah. But anyway, um, yeah, I gotta get my grinder and cut off this, cut this shit out. So I know some of you guys are like, don't put the amps there. It's already, it's already come to fruition. I think that's the proper word. It might not be. But anyway, we're getting this shit done. Um, some guys didn't like my Timu shit. I'm going to tell you, they, they, they sent me the shit for free, guys. What do you, what do you want? But they sent me the, the shit for free to do the video. And uh, I might have got a small fee for doing the video. It, it is what it is. But I do use Timu a lot. And I found a lot of the shit that I get from Timu, some of it's just junk. But the majority of it's good. Like the wire ends. Like, for instance, this morning... Let me see here. Where'd, where'd it go? Where'd the end of it? Where'd it end? Nope. Wrong wire. Huh. Blue orange, babe. Blue yeah. orange. Like this here. That was a Timu in. Exact same as the Spoobies that I've been buying on Amazon. And the heat shrink works. I mean, what more do you want, guys? Like, literally, what more do you want? It's all good. Um, But yeah, some of the shutdown Timu is actually good. So, uh, I don't know how them... Uh, Somebody said it was like a recipe. I don't know. Uh, some kind of saw. That one that goes. The reciprocating saw. And people like that. But anyway. Are them blades good? I don't know. I ordered 10. They sent me 30. 
So, uh, what the shit? We're going to try them on the blazer when we cut the back of the wall out and shit. So, yeah. I mean, if they don't work, I ain't out nothing. I just go to, to, to Harbor Freight and grab some. I just assume they're going to do fine. But anyway, I'll be back. So we got progress. Amp rack is done, guys. Everything's plugged in. I did uh, hook the remotes up. And I got a bear over there. I touched it to the battery positive, and both of the amps came on, which is golden. Right now, I got to drill this lug out because it's stupid 5 16 and he's getting stupid ass bars with 3 8 I hate that shit. Why do I got to use 3 8 on anything? 5 16 is perfect. And remember that big scar there? That's for me drilling one of these bitches out to 3 8 So I'm scared. I'm scared. But I got vice grips to hold that bitch. I'm going to try safe. Safety third, guys, always. Here is what we got. Amplifiers, all hooked up. Except for the speaker wires, is ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. Now, hither is all the wiring that will be going to uh, mids and high amp. Like power and ground, there's a remote there. Speaker wires, RCA cables. What the frick? Okay, yeah, RCA cables from the base knob that'll go to a distribution on back of the enclosure and then out to the two sub amps and then the four channel RCA for, uh, you know, whatever. Um, okay, that should be, your power and ground. We got everything there. Now, we got to get the box set in here. Yeah, because I've already drilled my terminals hither on each side. So it's going to be a, a, a chat. We got to get, I don't even know how I'm going to get that in here. Hopefully they're up higher than, than this shit over here. Because I know they'll sit in this pocket. Hopefully. Hopefully. Anyway, we're getting ready to test fit it. But I wanted to show y'all what I got before we get that far. What I really need to do is go ahead and get speaker terminals in here and here for that. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Sitting in there. My little partner Joe's here, so he'll, him and Deb hold it back while I put it in like at an angle. Only way to get it in there. Before I got the jumper and everything on it, I just got to screw it down. But it is in. So now I got to do this one. You know, I'll screw them both down and we got to call it, um, we got to call it Easter or something. I don't know. But the shit's looking pretty cool. I, I mean, I dig it. I know you guys. Some of you guys didn't like it, but I think it looks cool with the amps down there. Ah, oh, shit. It wore me out lifting that big bitch in there. When I get the other one sit here, I'll film it again so y'all can see what, what size these subs are. I'll be back. Well, the old G7s. Everybody keeps asking what happened to them and everything. Oh, shit. After a year, they're going in here. But, uh, yeah, I got to get the jumper on here, sit it up there, get the wires in one of them. Yeah, yeah. It sucked last time, and I know this time will be a little bit worse. So, either way, I'm getting this bitch put in here. I want to talk about tough. That was tough getting these bitches in there. Um, but they are in. I just got to boat them down. I have not screwed them down yet. They're both just sitting in there, but that and they're green. Deb's going to have to wipe them down with a damp cloth or something, but uh, really should have stained it or put the urethane over it. Hopefully it'll dry fully and not just keep wiping off. But the black one didn't do that when I tattooed inked it, but at this point, we're not giving a shit. Uh, they are in. They needed to wipe down anyway. Them dust caps dusty as hell. Luckily, my little homie Joe come over today to help. Cause that made this shit a whole lot better. Now I need to get um I need to get the seats up and get this box positioned. Ooh, look, you got all that down here. There's a lot of dog hair in this muffler. <laughs> Theoretically, we should have base today. We don't have no mids and highs, but we should have base today. 
I still got to get this thing that smoked out. Did not like 18 volts at all. It's all good though. Seats are locked in place, guys. And uh, this is where it sits. This is how it's going to look. How did y'all not think that was a good idea? Like, how? how? Look at how much we're, we're sitting above them. I can't believe y'all thought that wasn't a great idea. I dig it. Dig, diggity, dig, dig it. Yeah, that looks pretty badass in there. So, we've had the doors open all day to hatch. Dome has been on. We have 15 8 though, which don't bother me. This car charges at like 16 2. So, 15 8 is a good place to set these gains. So, right now, they are gain matched. Each amp is at a half ohm. When I got to sub some DB drive, they told me they sent dual ones and they're like running bitches at a half. So, guess what? They at a half. But anyway, um, I got them both gain matched. I think we set them at, what, 90 volt? Yeah. yeah, we set each one at 90 volt AC, unloaded. So, uh, right now, guys, all I got to do is put some ends on these wires, get them on them little studs there, and this car will have base. Uh, not shit for mids and highs right now, but it'll have base. So, that's things are looking up. But I might go ahead and slap an amp in the back of this thing. I mean, everything's there to do it right now. And all the wires. Oh, shit. It hit my fucking head right on that. I hit my head on that. Oh, shit. Motherfucker. Okay, so anyway. I got the remote here that's live. I got the speaker wires. I got the ground wire. I got the positive. Here is where I put the old uh, Ill -cust Illist Customs. Hell, I don't know. I bought it on. You bought that bitch on eBay. Works though. But yeah, mount an amp right here. I know people are like, don't mount your amp to the That bitch is double layered everywhere. It's good. So anyway, yeah, I have nowhere else in here to mount an amp anyway. So I do have a four channel that was in the old edge. So basically this car is just getting what was in the edge to begin with. Which it, do it doesn't matter to me. But we did a 40 hertz negative 5 dB tone to uh, set the gains in this. <laughs> we got the thumb drive out of jangling in this bitch. Uh, we're not going to play that music in here because even though this thing is tuned low, it ain't tuned that motherfucking low. But anyway, yeah, I'm going I'm to do some more work. But let's just appreciate how, how good that does look. Oh, so good. It looks so good. And them, oh yeah, they look so good. They look so good. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna get this shit done. Ha <laughs> ha. Put the mids and highs amp in just on the doors. I haven't ran wires back here yet. But I will tell you that the, the doors are playing and just car not started. Like it wasn't running, guys. But uh, when we were testing the mids, Deb said to hell with it and rolled in the old base knob a little bit. And, uh, yeah, it was basing. That's all I'm going to say. I don't know how it was sounding, but it, it was basing. So, would I say it's done? No, because I got to run wires through there to the back to that amp for all the front speakers. Not worried about it. I get it to Mari. What time is it? Four. It is four o'clock in the evening. We got a late start because of the rain. I got to button this shit up. Yeah. Huh. But if y'all remember, since this thing did not like 16 volt and went up in smoke, this is what I used to make my RCA distribution block in Jangle Lane. So what we going to do with this? We got to make an RCA distribution block for can't get right out of it. So I got the wife out here putting tools up because it looks like it could rain at any minute. And me, myself, I got to get this here buttoned up, taped up, back together. So I still got a fat roll of tape over here. Yeah, yeah. So guys... I'm going to do this, and hopefully we'll be able to go out here a little bit this evening and uh, just play with it. 
I ain't saying we're going to get full-fledged hair trick demo out of it today. But we got to play with it and see what it does. Before we hammer on it really hard, we kind of need to play with it and find frequency that it likes. Um, see about how far we can push everything and how the voltage does. So we might go out a little bit later and do that. I don't know. Well, we're going we're gonna to try. And then I will be back tomorrow. Okay, that's in. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow and we're going to do a little bit of uh, getting these front speakers and the dash working. Yeah. Let me tighten this shit up. All right, guys, so we're driving the car. The voltage got low from us having the, the, the doors open. So we've been up around 15.8, 15.9. We've been beating on it a little bit, but we have not turned it up yet. So I don't even know what it's gonna do. It's loud, like it's loud as shit. You know, we set the, the gains on the amp at 35. What have we turned it up to, 25? Mm -hmm. We've turned it up to 25 and it's stupid. So anyway, we're getting ready to do a little bit of testing and see just what it will do. So I might have some video footage for y'all. What's up guys so it's sunday morning i still need to hook the front speakers up in here to that four channel lamp but and i, I need to mow my fucking yard but yeah it's a no-go so far this morning because i don't know what the hell happened that looks so good back there but anyway uh yesterday out in the sun it got hot like it was so hot my balls were swampy guys i, I hate to admit it but they were you know um sticking in the side of my leg and shit and then today i get up and walk outside for uh, my morning coffee and cigarette and it's freaking like 41 degrees so I, I don't know what the hell happened i don't like cold weather especially after we come out of hot weather straight into cold weather so i'm waiting on the sun to come out it's, it's supposed to hit like 51 today i need to knock that out because the door speakers just ain't doing enough Hello. Like I'm to the point where I actually need something bigger, badder, better, more power than the IDO Ace mids in the door. Cause that that four channel it, it can overpower them is what I'm getting at. Like so they're pretty much adjusted at, at their max potential. They sound good though. Hey, they sound good. It's just without the front fill, we don't know exactly what's going on yet. But those are overpowering everything in the car. Like everything. When you turn the volume up, roll the bass knob up, you can't even hardly hear the mid. So, yeah. And I got the same problem in my black Jeep. But it is what it is. That's what happens when you build too much bass. I kind of did the math in here, and this is a little bit more cone area than 312s. So, this car has a wee bit more cone area, more power, and it is definitely louder than the black Jeep. So we're still trying to play with it and find like where it likes to play at. But I think we, what, 23? Yeah, somewhere around there. We've played like 23 in here and it's doing fine. <laughs> when this setup was in the edge, like the edge didn't like anything 25 and under. It was like, hell no. In here, it's like totally different. So we're still trying to find everything like where it likes to peak at, where it really likes to play. So it's a different box, different yeah we haven't really beat on it yet but the enclosure is doing great like it's really efficient because you can just roll the radio up to like 
volume 10 or 12 and roll the bass knob up and everything in here vibrates so it's doing good anyway I'll, I'll be back when i figure out what the hell we're gonna do today i mean we got our five gallon buckets okay we got to do like a 15 gallon saltwater change in our aquarium which that's kind of a weekly thing but we're trying to make a one-stop loop this morning to get vape juice and salt water and go from there I'll be back well we've been testing the shit out this thing and i did actually find juice that i was looking for i know it's all fucking subject whatever but if you vape and you buy the big bottles of juice and not them damn like pod lost mary whatever that bullshit disposables. is disposables yeah disposables um all juice has been tasting like shit like at first when you hit it it'll taste great and then the aftertaste is just shitty then you get cotton mouth really bad and i found out everybody's going to a synthetic nicotine i can't do this in thing so it took us a couple hours out running around this morning to find some place that actually had real juice with real nicotine in it so that has given us ample opportunity to uh play with the system in here now before it was slamming really good like 25 to uh 25 to 33 hertz did really really well but there was something missing somewhere because i could hear the subwoofers back here just dip off hard <laughs> i never went in this head unit and set up subwoofer channel so this thing was like i think it had like 150 hertz crossover set on it so i set that and then the low pass crossover for like subsonic was like preset at 25. so i had to go in at first i couldn't turn it down because the z-link thing was in the way but i figured out i could move that and i actually saw 20 up there so i set it at 20 with a hard 48 db roll off which is going to cause it to just fall not slanted but fall and then i went on the high end for my low pass filter and i set it at like 50 it's got weird numbers on this head unit i believe it was 53 and i kind of did a 12 db octave on it to taper it off so it'd play up to like 55 so this is all things that you kind of need to do when you put a new system in or a, just check all your crossover settings the sun is out so i think after we get water for the fish tank i might try to run speaker wire from the front to the back for our tweeters and center channel and that'll be good because at that point sound. yeah right now the door speakers aren't cutting so but when i set that up i do actually have to go up the road somewhere and play with the crossover settings and actually turn up the volume so we can um you know set the gain on the the four channel amp and everything show them the DSP. I, don't, babe, I don't need to show them the dsp on this piece of crap it's a max speeding rod head unit it's a piece of this piece of crap i mean actually it's been doing pretty good but sometimes it'll just lock up and it'll stay locked up for two days um not a fan but it ain't just max speeding rods I work for DS18, and I'm not, uh, we have head units. Actually, we just got some new single dens in that are badass. Like the 100 and 200. I can't remember the model number, but it end in 100, 200. They are badass. They got full DSP control, seven volt output. But yeah, not four, not five, seven. Um, and they're, they're really, the looks of them and the features, they look like a Kenwood or JVC which JVC owns Kenwood, and I'm a, I'm a Kenwood fan. Uh, the problem is the 200, the higher end one, the only difference is that damn thing has like a 200 watt amp built in. So I think it does 200 watts per channel on speaker outputs. But it's a full chassis design without a CD player. And then the 100 has got all the same features, it just doesn't have the big amp in it. And what's really cool about it, it comes with an additional plug for the back that just has speaker wire. So you can take that thing, throw it in the garbage because we're only going to run RCAs off of it. But 
they are they're they're pretty nice head units but the thing is they're single den and they're not that android bullshit at this point i don't know if anybody makes a decent android head unit what well, it's android I, I know some of you guys have android phones that's cool i i'm not an android fan uh but then again if apple made an in dash i'm not gonna say i would jump on that shit either because there's things i definitely don't like about apple but i like my head units pretty simple old school so at some point i need to get this car's double den obviously i need to break down and buy a kenwood for this thing and then it'll be pretty good but anyway tightening up all them crossover points has helped this car dramatically and it's playing down to like 23 24 now with some good authority so anyway that's all i got for now i will be back we're getting ready to grab our fish tank water I will be back when we start running speaker wire in this thing. So I want to get this video wrapped up. So I got speaker wires ran from the front to the four channel. The four channel is plugged in, but I'm not done. We got to go get our water. The place wasn't open. They opened at one. We got there at like 12, 15. But I did get all the wire and ran through here and everything is back together. So, and I got my new vape juice in my vape, and it's not bad. I'm happy. <laughs> so, what I got to do now, I'll put the buckets back in here for the salt water. If you own a salt water tank, you know what the hell I'm talking about. Got to do a water change a week, you know. We do 10 to 15 gallons a week, but here or there. Um. I had little RCA cables ran from the head unit down to where I had that itty bitty four channel, no go. So in preparation for everything, I ran a set of four channel RCAs from the head unit back, but the two channels I need for the highs are not hooked up. So I gotta pull the head unit, which means I gotta pull the center channel speaker off top of the dash, pull the heater controls, pull the head unit, unplug some rcas plug some rcas in and then i'm good but we're not gonna do it right now we're gonna go get water so hopefully i can get that done when we get back and then we can go somewhere park open the doors and i can adjust everything on the mid and high amp that i need to adjust and get it all blended perfect so that's currently where i'm at but i told the wife i could do this in 30 minutes so i did it in 30 minutes with the exception of the dam uh, hooking up the RCAs. So, with that being said, I just gotta pull the head unit and hook that shit up later. But the car's doing really good. Hold on. Yes, you! Fucking pollen. Yes, you! Fucking pollen. Okay, so anyway. One more look back here. Oh. I like it. The green and white go together really good. It don't look too funky how I rounded that shit off. And you can see we're still barely touching right there. But, I mean, the hatch close is good. But the amp rack down here, I mean, we've been beating the shit out of them, and they ain't really overheated yet. I'm anticipating them overheating. So I got some little fans that'll fit, like, right here or right there. But either way, I don't know. I'm still happy with it. And after getting that crossover like really dialed in, it did a whole lot better. So at this point, I just need to get shit cleaned up because all the tools I have out now, I won't need here in a little bit. So toolbox is the back door on the Jeep for some things. But all right, guys, I'll be back in a little bit. So, we're at the end of the video. I did pull the head unit and everything out. I got rid of some of the engine noise that it had. Because these Nissans, they don't have a ground. Uh, it's weird. And you got to kind of find the ground. Well, I had the steering wheel control. The metric system, like, grounded at one place. I had a ground so the end dash will work without the parking brake on. Blah, blah, blah. And I had the ground for the head unit. They were all together. I separated them and it seemed to help. 
where the head unit's over here by itself. The rest of them are over here by themselves. So that seemed to help. Now, uh, I did do what I was talking about earlier where I have the tweeters and center channel together on two channels of the amplifier. And I hooked the tweeters up normal, the four wires where to go on the amp. And then I turned around and put the uh, center channel, what would be bridge mode on the amplifier. And it seems to do real well. Not really worried about the crossover points because the tweeters have the little crossover in line. Don't have to worry about that. So everything's doing good now. We have not went out and drove it and turned it up to see what it does. But we do know that I set the gains at volume 35 on the subwoofer amps. We can turn up to 32 clean as day and we're never gonna turn it up past 32. So at 32, it's really clean. Even though that, that it's a big sound cube damp. It only says, I think it's like 90 by four or something. Obviously I'm thinking that amp's probably underrated because with everything set clean on the head unit, going in and setting the low pass cutoff on the rear channels at 80 hertz, it don't help the mids and the doors. Um, I'm not going to bash IDO Ace because obviously they're just off a of Chinese assembly line like most other speakers. Uh, I'm just, I need to find something better to put in the doors on there because that amp's not super powerful and the head unit set clean as shit. The head unit goes up to like 40, 40 or so. So I know it's clean at like 35 where I set the subs. I know it's definitely clean at 32. It's just the gains barely turned up at all on the, uh, the mids for, you know, in the doors. And they, they just don't sound, they start like not sounding great. So it don't matter if I turn the gain, like the level for front and rear, whatever, if I turn it down, it makes no difference. I can turn the gain up a little higher and then it starts doing it again. It don't get no louder. So anyway, probably need new mids for the doors. No big deal. I can change them in a matter of, you know, like 30 minutes, 45 minutes. Just got to see what we carry at my job that would be good to put in there. But other than that, the Rogue's beaten guys. Uh, we still haven't went like full ham on it yet because... Them subwoofers were in the edge for five days. I put that system in that edge on a Sunday. I pulled it out on a Friday evening. They got nowhere near the break-in time that they needed. Uh, that's just factual, you know. So they still need broke in. Because, I mean, they've only got like maybe two hours. They, they probably had two hours playtime on them before I put them in this car and they probably only had two hours playtime on them in this car you know and we've been fluctuating the volume turn it up turn it down but I know a lot of people are going to jump in the comments and say you don't need to do a break in on subwoofers bullshit <laughs> I mean I used to think the same way you just put them in and beat on them but when you got way more power than that subwoofer can handle and you just start turning it up the sub can't move full stroke because the spider is so tight and it overheats the shit out of it. Uh, that's, that's what happens, you know. Especially if you start getting into Nomex spiders that get tighter the more they move one direction. They, they really get bad. Because I've had a lot of subwoofers in that first, you know, few weeks to a month of like playing constantly on the way to work and home. You start hammering on it for a period of time and they'd get stinky pretty quick because they're overheating. Because they can't move far enough like that to uh, cool themselves off. It is what it is, guys. Um, so they do need a little bit more time for break-in. And we'll go from there and turn it up more and see what it does. But so far, I'm really impressed with it. And even cutting a section out of that box. You know, at first, I'm like, this thing ain't sounding great. It's loud as shit, but it ain't sounding great. I thought something might have been wrong. But when I found the... the head unit settings for the sub channel and kind of went in there and put everything where it should have been everything got right and it started sounding really good because that thing now you know like 
23 is, I think, the lowest we played in there, but it's playing it. It's playing like 25 to 33 really, really well. I would say it sounds great, but everything in the car, like the whole sunroof assembly is rattling like shit. It's rattling the car. Like that car has got way more rattles than the Edge had. It's a Nissan thing, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, guys, that's going to be all for this video. I hope y'all enjoy this shit. If you do enjoy this shit, and you're not subscribed here, go ahead and, you know, like, subscribe, give me a follow, whatever that shit is on YouTube, you know, hit the notification, well, you don't have to, I don't, I don't really hit that bell for no, I subscribe to a lot of people, though, and, uh, if you're gonna buy from Big Jeff, Down for Sound, whatever, LF Audio, you know, them badass wireless bass knobs, they're still on pre-sale, and after the pre, like, basically, when, a couple days before stock comes in, which should be in like two to three weeks, they're going to go up a hundred bucks. So the pre-sale will save you a hundred. And I will tell you this too. Uh, basically, he's got so many on pre-sale. The pre-sales might eat up the majority of the inventory that he gets in. And then at that point, you might have to wait two weeks again for it to come back in stock. But if you pre-order, you're going to be first come first serve on that shit. Or you're going to be like, first in line to get it so yes i am already like pre-ordered on two of them myself but my link's in the bio also or in the description of this shit whatever anyway i'm tired i've been working on this car both of my last two weekends and still ain't mowed my damn yard so anyway guys peace out and as always base on